Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another blind commentary. And uh, today I'm looking at another Cinemarisons video from Little Shy. This time it's Everything Wrong with the Legend of Everfree in 11 minutes or less. I wanted to do this video sooner, uh, but last time I looked at this series I realized just how long it had been since I had reacted to any of the episode based ones, so I just figured I'd do those first and prioritize that. But I did want to still do, the, do this well. Uh, the movie was at least somewhat fresh in people's minds, which who knows how successful I am there, but I mean, I'm sure people will still enjoy this, and that I'll still enjoy this, because I did rather like Legend of Error Free. I mean, it wasn't like as super memorable as Rainbow Rocks, but it was still pretty good, and I'm eager to see what Little Shy has to say about it. Hopefully, it's pretty fun. Let's get started and find out. Okay. And here we go. Everything wrong with Legend of Error Free in 11 minutes or less. Spoilers. Duh. Sleep on marshmallow pillows! Sleeping with snacks is a great way to get your face eaten by a bear. Okay. Passing is, on a I, solid I yellow. Guess that makes sense. <laughs> is almost as bad as playing console. Not only does this exist, but they made four of them. <laughs> Sing along opening title isn't synced up. Non sentient is in a My Little Pony movie. Abundance well, of We've even seen a horse before. Makes up for past movies <laughs> obsession with the moon. Spelling Applejack's name like this. This is oh. dawn level of quality. It's yeah, not that's in a pretty bad. Girls movie without excessive Pinkie Pie exposition to annoy the grown-ups and confuse the kiddies. Yeah. Not high has become a regular magic magnet. It's gonna be nice getting away to a place where we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Unironic, ironic foreshadowing because Equestria Girls is nothing if not consistent. <laughs> Brad delivers Twilight's bag from the woods. Cool story, bro. Leave it to Brad to incorrectly repeat memes he read on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know how there's that girl who looks just like you when she's here but lives in another dimension and she's a pony princess? The fact that these are actual words <laughs> someone had to write on a script and have approved to pay people to voice and animate is a sin. Pinky's extremely offensive expression should be censored immediately. Magical gems disappear, then reappear. Love at first profile shot, because motion blur is cheaper than actually using a decent frame rate. Speaking of leaving things behind, now's the time when we give out tent assignments, so you can leave your heavy bags behind. Even the voice actor sounded unsure about that line. Sapphires mm -hmm. aren't just blue, they can be pink, purple, yellow. Twilight must be fun at parties. DJ Pony yeah. can talk, headcanon silenced. <laughs> oh, I never Every noticed that. <laughs> That's Equestria Girls franchise gets paranormal interesting. feelings during the first half of their movie. Especially considering what happened at the Friendship Games. That wasn't your fault. That was entirely her fault. Principal kind of. Who encouraged you to try and use all that magic to win the games for Crystal Prep. Careful, Sunset. You might choke on all that exposition. <laughs> Somehow, this sunscreen gets all the way over here. We've all ponied up before, gotten the whole ears and wings and tail thing, shot magical rainbow lasers, but nothing like this has ever happened. Yeah, all of that is dull compared to basic levitation magic. Uh, I know I'm charming, <laughs> but you don't have to fall for me. No offense to Brian Doe, but you can hear the hesitation in his voice every time the script calls for an incredibly stupid line. <laughs> you know. Good point. I get it. That makes one of us. Luna, from powerful, complicated character with a proper villain backstory who's a lovable and misunderstood ruler from a past millennium, to bureaucratic soccer mom who shuts down all waterfront activities due to a single broken board. <laughs> Normally, this impossible feat would be attributed to Applejack's magical strength she doesn't know she has yet, but then this ridiculousness happens. Timber creates handmade lights from store-bought lights, and for some reason, Twilight is impressed. That was a terrible yeah, story. It's... Element of honesty, everyone. Obligatory Wilhelm. Gratuitous shipping. Newton's third law doesn't exist in this universe because the amount of energy required to break the dock would surely shatter the back of the boat as well. All our hard work. Ruined. Absolutely ruined. You'll never be able to stand on this dock again. Fluttershy isn't concerned about fish eating gem dust. Foreground layered under lily pads. Yeah, I can hear a bit of a similarity there. Twilight sings about how much she doesn't want her friends to know about her schizophrenia, despite this being implied time and time again without the need for a filler song. Entire scene can be summed up with, Twilight runs into the woods by herself to talk to herself while hallucinating vividly, <laughs> running a line through a hook yeah. instead of a pulley. This accident was not caused by a surge of magic, but rather the disappearing belaying break. Rarity's oh, momentum yeah. should have lifted Applejack off the ground. Talking to animals is still something that surprises Fluttershy. Why were you gone for so long? That three and a half minutes took forever. Inexplicable <laughs> lighting change. 
obligatory brony appeasement. Fluttershy, enough with the screaming. That sounded nothing like Fluttershy. Yeah. Maybe we forget about this new magic for a bit. Who wants to have anything to do with magic when we have canoeing and basket weaving <laughs> to look forward to? <laughs> Floating lanterns are banned in many places due to their fire hazard, making them perfect camp activities because you're hidden from authorities by the surrounding combustible trees. Floating lantern violence. Oddly loud <laughs> chest. The Equestria Girls run animation will never not be funny. Wow, yeah. Is polite yeah. To let Sunset finish her sentence. Sunset needs to stop telling Twilight the magic is a good thing and instead tell her the truth about how Twilight is being delusional for thinking she's the center of everything going on. Magic turned you into something beautiful. Yes. Behold, true beauty. <laughs> See kids, lying is always a solution. <laughs> Pinky's afraid of blowing something up. Applejack is afraid of smashing something with her super strength. Rarity is afraid of hurting someone with her force push. Dash is afraid of moving too fast. And Fluttershy, she's probably mistaking this rope for a snake or something. <laughs> Gravity defying point. Well, she's just Fluttershy. That's all you need. This one nail is holding the entire dock together. Pinky almost kills her friends, and this is her reaction. Well, glad that didn't happen, huh? What if uh, it turns out yeah. that they could actually make things yeah. better? So you have magic. Sunset uses magic to make her singing voice better. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using musicals to progress the story, but most songs in this movie merely re-emphasize something said right That's before it and good only point. exist as soundtrack selling filler. Five seconds flat because Equestria Girls is 40% cooler than Tony. <laughs> He wants her to get rid of the camp. <laughs> Thinking out loud and looking right at the camera, <laughs> wow. fodder. Sunset Shimmer? What were you doing behind that door? Brad Bradley? Um, what were you doing behind that cabin? Maybe you and me, we could start over as friends. As if they hadn't already? Best pony, comfort's yeah. worst human. Timber <laughs> disappears, then reappears. She says to meet her by the rock quarry. I thought we weren't supposed to hike out that far. Yes, that dangerous, faraway place campers aren't allowed to hike out to, which is a few whole steps away from the campfire. Think about uh, how they got here for a moment. Good point. What are the odds that Timber just happens to be heading in this direction and Sunset just happens to spot him and follow him, after which she just happens to lose track of him and just happens to spot a convenient attention-grabbing light, which just happens to have nothing to do with Timber at all. Poor guy probably just had to pee. <laughs> the villain is so eager to share evil plan that they do so before being exposed as the villain at all. Two and a quarter minute long flashback of events, which could have been presented better almost any other way. <laughs> Remember, kids, yeah, companies uh, in a position of power who ruin yeah. their sentimental value in order to make more money are evil. Completely reasonable As businessman is portrayed wow. as the villain for some reason, despite going out of his way to give Gloriosa more time. Yeah, he was this pretty reasonable, and awkward, that's in character for him, since he is a pretty reasonable guy. Time. You were using magic all over the place. I had to tell them something to cover for you. Gloriosa didn't use magic until long after his alleged cover story. There is so much unexplained anger during these arguments that pages of the script had to have been cut out. Either that or the movie is just terribly <laughs> written. This is what optimism looks like here on Cinemare Sins, folks. Neither Sunset nor Gloriosa know what a geode is. Not to mention the alternating names is a clear sign of too many writers in the kitchen. Those things you were doing to make this week the best week ever. First of all, redundant week is weekly redundant. Second, yeah, shame on her for wanting the best for her campers. And I'm going to use it to save my camp. She said, shortly before destroying her camp. Yeah. Script probably called for Vine's forming outfit, but since the animation budget was drying up, we're left with flashes of light. This copy-pasted balloon. Why does this scene exist? Can't even use the usual complaint of being filler because of how short it is. Was it an attempt at a joke? Probably. We literally just finished building that. Literally. What are we going to do? What we always do. Save the day! Alcoholic? Stop drinking! Depressed? Cheer up! Insomniac? Go to sleep! Camp overrun by magical vine-controlling she-demon? Save the day! <laughs> it's a shame we're in the middle of nowhere and can't use our phones to call for help. Anyone ever figure out why ponying up is a thing? We're four movies in and it still makes no sense. Yeah. Forget women and children, save the picnic tables! Make your trips to the spa. The, the reaction of any Rarity fan who thinks she's better than as portrayed in this movie. <laughs> Sunset, you're a 
Okay. Yes, because they were the ones in danger. Wow. That isn't your sister. <sighs> it's someone who's been consumed by equestrian magic. This is a terrible excuse to give every villain a get out of jail free card. They are still very much responsible for their actions. Moral of the Equestria Girls franchise. It's not your fault if power corrupts you. Justice only applies to other people. No amount of buy our toy jokes can end the suffering of pure spronies everywhere. Stay strong, my friends. It's difficult to summarize how poorly the characters are written in this movie compared to the show within the format of a Sins video, so this clip exemplifies Rarity's shallow sentiment towards the current state of events, in addition to how the Hasbro writers feel towards the main six we've come to know and love. I almost don't care what they are. They are gorgeous! We can't let Filthy Rich take his place away! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can't let that perfectly innocent businessman get away with holding up his end of a simple property agreement because we're too broke to pay him what we owe. Rainbow Dash, still slower than email or social media. Yeah. Deja vu? Nope, just a 14 second scene of recycled animation. Thank you all so much for coming and for helping us raise enough money to pay, pay for, for my, my bail. bail. <laughs> I just asked for help in the first place. Hey, that would make more sense. Blatantly obvious plot holes is my job. Twilight is what, 16? Hey, Timber, why don't you have a seat over there? Chris <laughs> Hansen wants a word. I think the crystals don't think are he's that much older. Superpowers. I think maybe we were meant to have them all along. The gems, I mean geodes, I mean crystals were meant to be in their possession all along, just because. We're meant to be surprised at this forced reveal of equestrian magic, even though just a little while ago Sunset herself said it was. Equestrian magic. Every character is insane, irrational, or both. The main characters spend half the movie being ignorant of their magic, Twilight is schizophrenic, Sunset can feel things, Pinky has no remorse about almost murdering her friends, Rarity is the cardboard cutout we praised the show for not being, Timber is a predator, Gloriosa has extreme cognitive dissidence, Luna is a paranoid soccer mom, and Brad has only ever been attracted to people who are once horses. The only sane character is the one portrayed as the irredeemable villain. That's so great. <laughs> only ever <laughs> Brad has issues. I don't care what they Okay. So yeah, that was exactly what I've come to expect from Little Shy. Uh, as characteristically harsh on the Equestry Girls films as ever. Uh, and yeah, I, I agree with him on most of it. I, I, I think pretty much everything he said, he's not wrong. <laughs> it... Uh, it's definitely a series and a franchise with problems, big problems, that really do make you scratch your head and wonder, and uh, there's a lot wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> I still like the films, and I like this one, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it really comes down to what he said about Luna. That is really my core problem with the entire franchise as a whole. It's just such a reductive step for the series in general. To go from Equestria and everything we have set up in the series to this much more, more mundane and ordinary world that just is inherently less interesting. And uh, that's really why I like this film in particular. Uh, it's kind of a step away from that. We're actually incorporating magic in a much broader way and in a much more lasting way and I think that's really progress that's being made and that's my favorite thing about Legend of Everfree. Uh, though, yeah, everything he said, I mean, it's all pretty true. <laughs> the film has problems, a lot of the writing doesn't make sense and a lot of just all of it is pretty weird and uh, the characters are one-dimensional and and or just poorly thought out and uh, it's not a perfect film by any stretch uh, far from it Rainbow Rocks is still the best film in the series by a lot 
But, uh, yeah, I did enjoy it, and I did enjoy this, and uh, I thought it was funny. I thought Little Shy did a good job. He presented everything in a quite amusing way and kept me laughing, and it was a good video. Anyway, hope you liked the commentary. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.